Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. In this video, I'm going to cover audit planning on financial statements. Audit planning is covered by the International Standards on Auditing 300. The subtopics that I'm going to cover on the audit planning activities, reason, stages in audit process, step, the client acceptance, knowledge of client business and industry, preliminary analytic procedures, risk assessment only the introduction part, and then after that, the preparation of the audit program. There are reasons for auditor to plan his audit work. The main reason is actually for auditor to be able to issue appropriate audit opinion. So in giving appropriate audit opinion, the auditor has to plan. By planning, the auditor is able to conduct the audit in an efficient, effective and timely manner. What is the difference between efficient and effective? Efficient is where the audit, auditor will carry out the audit work smoothly. Effective, on the other hand, is where the auditor perform the audit work and be able to achieve the objective of the audit. What does it mean by timely here? Timely, it means that the auditor perform the audit within the time that is given to them to complete the audit. So planning ensure that the auditor is able to complete the audit work within the time given to them. Planning is also for auditor to obtain sufficient and appropriate evidence. What does it mean by sufficient and appropriate evidence? I will cover this later with you. But importantly, planning is to ensure that auditor obtain evidence. The reason is because evidence will be used by auditor to form opinion about the client's financial statements. Planning will also enable auditor to identify areas where he need to perform the audit. And certain areas are critical that auditor pay more attention. So by planning, the auditor is able to determine how much time that he is going to spend on this critical area. Also to determine the types of audit procedure that he is going to perform, when to perform, who is going to perform the audit, and so on. Okay, the next reason for planning is to make sure that he is going to keep the audit cost at a minimum level, but at the same time to remain competitive. So when auditor plan, he doesn't have to incur unnecessary costs. So planning will only ensure that the auditor perform the audit on areas that are important and also to consider the best audit techniques to be performed so that the auditor can keep the audit cost at a reasonable amount. Planning will also ensure that the auditor avoid legal liability against them. So the auditor, when plan, the auditor will have to be careful, ensure that be diligent, and also to ensure that uh, the documents uh, to be organized properly, to be kept and retained. So planning will ensure that the auditor identify how the audit papers are going to be documented and so on. So this is uh, to ensure the audit work is going to be done with quality and therefore will 
reduce the legal liability against them and also by planning the auditor will be able to reduce the misunderstanding between them and the client planning will reduce the auditor's misunderstanding with the client because the auditor would be able to identify their responsibility and the responsibilities of the management so the auditor will make sure that they will fulfill their responsibility and also to remind the client about their responsibilities does planning enable auditor to establish the overall audit strategy that sets the scope timing and direction of the audit and that guides the development of the audit plan there are many benefits that the auditor gain by planning first is that the auditor can pay attention to the areas of audit that are critical where the auditor perceive that there are some issues that they need to uh, solve, they need to consider and pay attention. So, therefore, the benefit is that by identifying these potential problem areas, the auditor can resolve the issue on a timely basis. Then, another benefit is the auditor can properly organize and manage the audit engagement so that the auditor can perform this audit work in an effective and efficient manner also planning enable auditor to make sure that the auditor can assign members to the engagement team with their appropriate levels of competency and capabilities and this is to ensure that the anticipated risk that had been identified earlier can be assigned to those who have higher competency level another benefit of planning is that the audit team members can get supervision from the higher level or the supervisor if there are any issues because in planning these have been identified and these have been considered whom that the team members can consult with if they have any issues or they have any problem in performing the audit work also uh, planning enable the supervisor to review the work of the team members planning also enable um, the audit work can be done in efficient because there will be coordination of work by the auditors between uh, them and the experts does planning enable auditor to establish the overall audit strategy that sets the scope timing and direction of the audit and that guides the development of the audit plan basically there are four stages in the audit process the first one is planning and that is what the vi this video is all about the second stage is about the performing the test of control and to obtain all the evidence about the client's internal control the third stage is the auditor perform the test of details on the financial statements in order to obtain evidence about the financial statements whether they are prepared in a true and fair manner or not and lastly for auditor to give opinion about the financial statements and that will be in the audit report there are eight stages of planning that the auditor has to undergo and the ultimate 
the ultimate uh, outcome of the planning is for auditor to develop the overall audit plan and the audit program. Right, the first stage is where the auditor has to consider about accepting a client and to perform initial audit planning. Before the auditor starts planning, first of all, the auditor must make sure that the client that he is or they are going to engage are the client of credible. There are no issues with the client's integrity. There are no issues about the client's business. And the client can be the new client or it can be the continuing client. In this video, we assume that the auditor has accepted the client and is engaged to the client. A separate video will talk about client's acceptance. The consideration that the auditor has to make before accepting a client. So when the auditor has accepted the client, the first thing is for auditor to perform the initial audit planning and how that is going to be. First, the auditor has to obtain the information about the client's business and industry. This is the second stage to the planning. Uh, I'm going to talk about understanding the client business and industry a bit later. Okay, the third stage is where the auditor is going to assess the client's business risk. Next, the auditor is going to perform the preliminary analytical procedures. Then, auditor is going to set materiality and assess acceptable audit risk and inherent risk. Next, the auditor is going to understand internal control and assess control risk. The next step is auditor to gather information to assess fraud risk in general for the client. And finally, the outcome of the planning is to actually develop the overall audit plan and the audit program. The first stage of planning is where now the auditor accepts the client and is going to perform initial audit plan. So what the auditor has to do here? First, the auditor has to understand the reason for performing the audit. The auditor has to make it clear with the client what is the reason for the client's engaged auditor for. Okay, for this purpose, because we are doing audit on the financial statements, therefore the Client's reason, therefore, would be for auditor to perform audit on the financial statements. Next is for the auditor to obtain the engagement letter. Okay, when we say obtain here, it, it is actually the auditor has to prepare the engagement letter. And uh, this will be given to the client for the client to go through the terms uh, to go through the terms of the engagement to understand the responsibility of the auditor and to understand uh, the client's responsibility. Also, the engagement letter will set out the uh, audit work that are going, the audit works that are going to be performed by the auditor. Uh, the basis of the audit fee too will be stated in the engagement letter. If let's say the auditor uh, found that the management has not agreed to certain term, the auditor has to redraft the engagement letter and give back to the management. If let's say everybody, both parties have agreed to the terms, then both parties must uh, sign the engagement letter and um, 
the final copy will be given to the management for them to keep for future reference and also one copy will be kept by the auditor for also future reference so remember this engagement letter is prepared by auditor and both parties have to sign that and it will constitute as a contract between both parties the auditor and the client and also the engagement letter indicate that the auditor formally has accepted engagement then the auditor is going to perform initial audit plan and this include planning the number of staff to be engaged in the audit work if the auditor feels that the staff is not competent then the auditor perhaps have to send them for training or if let's say it's not sufficient then the auditor has to consider advertising for the audit vacancy with the appropriate competence level also the auditor has to consider whether the need of the expert uh, the expertise from the outside because the client sometimes uh, are new to the auditor where the business are not too familiar to auditor so the auditor has to consider uh, obtaining outside expertise the next step in planning is the auditor has to obtain understanding about the client business and industry okay when we say the client business the auditor need to understand about the business operation and processes the auditor need to understand about the assets of the business the auditor need to understand about the management and the governance or the legal framework that cover the client the auditor too has to obtain about the objective of the client business and the strategy that they are undertaking not only that the auditor has to make a tour to the client's plans and office to gain more understanding for planning purposes then the auditor has to obtain the understanding about the client's performance with regard to client's industry the auditor has to get understanding about the client's position within the industry and how the performance of the client as compared to the industry average auditor also has to obtain information whether there are new regulations imposed on the industry for example like new laws new legal requirements new standards the performance of the industry in relation to the present situation and also the auditor need to identify any related parties that means whether the client is attached to any other business organization this will give ideas to the auditor about the client's business in relation to its industry and the performance operation and so on the next stage is for auditor to assess business risk business risk uh, is a situation where the client company may not achieve its objective and this can be a situation where it might lead to financial statements being misstated example of business risk would be the company may not achieve the profit target some of the asset might have been stolen or abused the employees or management did not comply with rules and regulation so the auditor has to assess this and 
Also, the auditor has to consider whether the management has some controls that can mitigate this business risk. For example, like they have uh, the good corporate governance structure that can eliminate this business risk or if not eliminate, reduce. Or also whether the company has uh, the risk management yeah, where risk can be assessed and uh, this therefore can reduce the business risk. The next uh, planning stage is uh, where auditor perform the preliminary analytical procedures. Preliminary it means that this is a planning stage. Later you will see that uh, analytical procedures may be carried out at other stages of the audit. Um, so, preliminary analytical procedure is actually for auditor to gain more understanding about the client's business performance. And this is to ensure that the auditor may cover all important aspects of the client so that the auditor might obtain appropriate, sufficient or the evidence to form the conclusion about the overall financial statements of the client. Briefly, let's look at the analytical procedures. Later, we are going to cover a topic on analytical procedures. Okay, uh, the ISA International Standards on, on Auditing 520 define analytical procedure as the analysis of significant ratios and trends, including the resulting investigation of fluctuations and relationships that are inconsistent with other relevant information or which deviate from predicted amounts. And this analytical procedures at later stage uh, is actually one type of evidence. So the analytical procedure is actually the auditor use comparison or the auditor make comparison and uh, study the relationship between two items, uh, two items of uh, the financial data or between financial and non-financial data to determine the reasonableness of this relationship or comparison. Example, to determine the relationship between commission and sales. We know that if sale increase, commission too would increase. But if commission decrease, then something might not be right there because it is not reasonable. Okay, these are the phases of the analytical procedures. Okay, we have the planning phase, the testing and the completion phase. Okay, what we are discussing now is actually the planning stage, uh, the planning or the pre-plan stage. Uh, and the reason is actually, main reason is actually to obtain client, to obtain understanding about the client's industry and business. There are the other reason for performing the analytical procedure at this uh, planning or initial planning stage is actually to assess the going concern of the client because going concern of the client indicates its present performance and the auditor is going to use this in order to determine the type of test that the auditor is going to pursue when actually performing the audit. Also, this uh, analytical procedure will indicate whether there are misstatements because we said just now that the analytical procedure is a study about or analysis about uh, a relationship or comparison. So, any relationship uh, or comparison that are not consistent or does not make sense may indicate something uh, might not be right with the financial statements and uh, also due to that uh, the analytical procedure analytical procedure can actually reduce detailed tests if if let's like, say it indicates that the company has actually um, um, there are no issues about the company 
On the other hand, if let's say the analytical procedure indicate otherwise, then it will not be reduced, but it's going to be extensive detailed test. These are the five types of the analytical procedure or the comparisons yeah, that the auditor can perform on the client's business. First is where the auditor can compare the data of the client with the industry, whatever data that will be. And then the next one would be to compare the client's current data with its similar prior period data. This means that let's say the auditor would like to compare the present sales figure for the first three months, let's say starting from January to March. Uh, and uh, to compare that with the previous year sales figure also from January to uh, March to determine whether there is increase in sales figure for the first quarter uh, as compared to the last year. Then the auditor can also make comparison of the client's data with the uh, um, the, the expected result, for example, like the budget, the forecast, and so on. Okay, next, the auditor may make comparison between uh, the auditor determined result with the client actual data. Yeah, because sometimes the auditor uh, has actually uh, calculated the depreciation rate of certain asset and compare that with the client calculated depreciation figure to determine whether these are reasonable or not reasonable. And then lastly, what the auditor can do is actually to make comparison of the client's data that is financial with non-financial data. For example, like let's say the client is a, is a, a hotelier where they let out the rooms and by auditor determining the rate and then multiply that by the number of rooms that are occupied based on certain season then the auditor can compare to the the client's calculated figure to determine its reasonableness so far, we have covered the first four stages of planning. Okay, the fifth stage will be covered in a separate video that is uh, on the materiality and risk. And also in that video, I will cover about the um, gathering information to assess fraud risk. And this will be the fraud risk assessment uh, is going to be very briefly. Alright, the stage, the sixth stage, which is uh, understand internal control and access control risk. I have mentioned this in my video, which talks about the internal control. Maybe you would like to go back to the video and listen to that. Right, the last stage is about developing the overall audit plan and audit program. Okay, in this, the auditor, as we said earlier, need to plan so that the auditor can carry out the audit work efficiently and effectively and also to perform that in a timely manner. So when the auditor is going to develop the audit plan, the auditor has to consider this in detail. The auditor has to uh, cover all audit uh, cycle of the client and the auditor is going to assign the audit staff uh, to perform the audit work and the competency level would be different for different types of audit work. The more difficult, more sophisticated or more confused audit area will be covered by a more competent audit staff. And also the auditor has to document this plan. Uh, the documentation of the audit plan will be in the audit program. So the audit program is actually a very comprehensive guidance to the auditor. Okay, as to not only as to whom uh, to carry out the type of audit test or audit procedure, but it's also 
uh, covering the uh, timing as to when to carry out the specific audit test, who is going to carry out and when they should have completed the audit procedures. Also, the audit program will indicate uh, or will uh, provide guidance as to the types of documents that the audit staff member or the audit engagement team members have to obtain to compile and um, the audit program also will um, give information about the areas if let's say the auditor face difficulty to whom or which super supervisor that they have to contact in order to solve the problem the audit program also will indicate um, to the supervisor as to the area that have been covered by the audit engagement team members and the area which have not been covered yet so by by uh, reviewing the audit program then uh, the supervisor or whoever reviews that will understand how much that the audit work has been carried out and what is the expected date that they are going to complete and if let's say from this audit program it seems that the audit is going to be delayed then necessary action or step will be taken by the audit manager in order to uh, ensure that uh, the action taken can actually um, improve the performance of the audit so that the audit work can be completed uh, based on the time schedule. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh.